this is Sandra Beneath and Tony Coyle, and they are jointly presenting. Um, they've lived in the Shire, well, uh, Sandra um, has a background in environment, environmental education, uh, was the project manager of Bundy on Top, which as Bob mentioned earlier, uh, Bundy on Tap, pardon me, uh, making Bundy on <laughs> and on top, uh, <laughs> both. Um, which was the making Bundanoon the first bottled water free town as I just rather guiltily grabbed a bottle of water um, and walked in I didn't realize quite what I was doing. Um, Sandra is also the chair of the Winter Caribbee 2031 plus people reference group um, and they have a, a big focus on local and sustainable food. Uh, as Tony says he enjoys watching asparagus grow. Um, Tony has global experience as a strategy consultant working with fast growth businesses. Um, he's lived in the Shire for 18 years and is president of Bundanoon Community Garden and co-founder of the annual Grow, Cook, Eat Festival, which sounds like my type of festival, I have to say. Can I introduce Sandra and Tony? Food. Well, just as in the 70s we had the age of music and in the 90s we had the age of the internet, we're now entering the age of food, according to Julian Cripp, science writer. And this, he says, will be an age with changes more profound than at any other time in human history. In this time, the demand for a greatly increased food production will occur with almost everything needed to do this by transitional means becoming scarce. Soil, water, nutrients, energy, technology, fish capital, and a stable climate. There's a growing awareness of the impacts of these resource constraints and the low carbon future. But with all these forces at play, there's also an opportunity. With growing consumer trends, people are really wanting to reconnect with their food sources wanting food that's authentic, that's sustainably grown, healthy and local. So what does this mean for the Highlands? In fact, never have the business opportunities been so wide or so great. However, agriculture in the Southern Highlands is seriously underdone. The Highlands used to be a food bowl for its own residences, but now we've estimated that perhaps less than 1% of our food eaten locally is grown locally at best. So these changes are coming. Um, how well, how we do it and how well we do it will in fact define the human future of Winja Caribbee, its food security and the social, environmental and local economic health for future years. Put it simply, in the age of food, all the chickens have come to roost. These changes will affect our food security and our food sovereignty are coming. We can ride the wave of change or we can be left behind in its wake. The On The Grow group are all people who are passionate about creating this local fair food system. And I'll come back to that word, fair, as well as local. And they came together in the early food sector meetings leading up to Council's Economic Summit, not that long ago, and at the June screening of the Australian film, Fair Food, the documentary. Who are we? Well, our core team up there, we have Phil Lavers, mathematician, recovering banker and propri proprietor of Moon Acres Organic Farm at Fitzroy Falls, Dr. John Vella, an agricultural research scientist, seedling grower and plant breeder, Jill Cockrum, the well-known permaculturist and local food pioneer, Joe O'Brien, who's with us somewhere in the room today, Joe, <laughs> financial accountant, beekeeper and community food activist, and Tony, who will be meeting shortly, and myself. Our aim is up there for you to see. All of us, um, with these diverse backgrounds, recognise that the current industrialised, globalised food system is failing us on a number of levels. As we saw in the Australian made documentary, we also saw a big challenge to shift this, to provide an alternative and an opportunity. So what would a truly visionary 
truly strategic, not siloed, and truly entrepreneurial, whole of community, local food system look like? For us, first of all, it would be fair. It would be fair for the farmers so that they can, they can make a viable living. In Australia, seven farmers leave the land every day. It would be fair for the earth. We have, we're blessed with water and land resources and some parts of the Shire with magnificent soil and we want to be able to continue this activity for generations to come. And it would be fair for all consumers, not just those with the dollars to afford it the healthy food that we can grow here. So this is going to be a whole of, whole of community, whole of system, long-term strategy. Our next problem was how do you shift the whole system? It hasn't actually changed greatly in the last five years here. Um, the glaringly obvious one is growing the growers. We have wonderful growers and they're out there growing beautiful, clean, nutritious food, but there are not enough of them, especially vegetable growers. We all know we have to eat a lot more veggies. Um, the next is to build these new short direct supply chains. And in the last box over here, to build the demand, the awareness and uh, of people to support our local growers and build that loyalty to do the same. Once we started looking more closely, we found we were in fact looking at least nine sub-project boxes. Quickly, this is a, very, a lot to look at at once here, in the Grow the Growers box, um, over on the left, there are three projects developing, all working to grow the supply from the agricultural sector. We want more farmers working on more land in responsible and regenerative ways and growing more food for local consumption and earning good livelihoods. And we want everything else that goes with that, all the agricultural services, businesses, and new high-tech startups. So lots of 21st century green jobs. Over on the right here, growing the demand, the market base. Uh, the engagement of the local market for local food is the key here. Firstly, it makes the whole system less vulnerable to external fluctuations those external shocks that we don't know when they'll appear, whether they be energy shocks, oil shocks, because the local consumers understand their responsibility to support local growers. It also provides in that way the stable base that local farmers need. They don't want to have these huge you know, orders and, and customers uh, base one year and have it drop out the next and so on. And it helps ensure that the money spent stays in the region. And this area of building the market's well underway. In the last few months alone, we've had two screenings of Fair Food, the documentary, with very lively discussion panels and audiences. We've rolled out the Free Veggie Starter Kit project through the community gardens, preschools and schools in the Highlands, starting very young growers indeed, but also awareness of, of the importance of food growing and food, the value, true value of food, beyond it being a commodity. And we've had the DA approved for crop swaps and a weekly growers market at the new Mossvale site, which I'll be coming back to. Now over in the direct food chains, uh, down the bottom, farmers markets, of course, are a powerful channel for building those long-term and committed relationships between the grower and the, e and the eater, not just for sales. And we're very impressed with the Sage Farmers Market at Maruya, and we've been looking very closely at that. And what the On The Grow team is most excited about in this area is the creation of a food hub with a food box channel for distribution of local produce to people's homes and also to businesses and other organisations. We'd love to see a food hub supplying local schools, restaurants, the hospital, other businesses. We'd also love it to have the capacity for food donations and surpluses to be directed to those less able to afford it so that everyone could have <coughs> clean, healthy, nutritious food, ve vegetables for the family table every week. This is the Mossvale site that we've been talking about. Um, it's certainly a blank canvas. It was an old bowling green, several old bowling greens. <laughs> Um, now approved to have a weekly growers market and crop swap. And this site activity will build as the number of local growers build. All of those three boxes and nine sub-projects need to be built together 
to have a good and convincing and farmer's market where you can go and do your weekly shop, you need to have a certain level of local growers and so on. Um, it, bits of it have been done in recent years and that's fantastic, um, but to avoid that siloed approach and look at the whole system, we feel is the only way that this is really going to move ahead and the timing is perfect. The site will also be in March next year, the venue for the successful Grow, Cook, Eat Festival, which will be themed Fair Food on the Grow for 2016. So a wonderful opportunity exists with some support with zoning to launch this site as a food hub and a vibrant new social space in Moss Vale. Surrounded by so many groups and activities already at the site, there's the community garden next door, Meals on Wheels, the Elizabeth Street Centre and children's long daycare. It's really well positioned to become the heart of a flagship fair food precinct for the Shire. And that would be a fitting first for Moss Vale um, really the centre of agricultural, agricultural enterprise in the Highlands, historically. I'm going to hand you over for Tony, so you get a bit of a change of voice here. So I think one of the interesting questions is, is how big the opportunity is in, in the Southern Highlands for this kind of development. And if you think about brand, there's some interesting um, things going on in brand that we're talking about here. One is that we're actually talking about a premium food brand. We're talking about the most nutritious food, um, which normally commands a premium price, uh, grown in regenerative ways, um, but freely available for all or accessible for all. And when we hear premium brand, we think of, uh, of expense. We think of a very elite group of people who are able to access that brand. Um, so th we're trying to do something very different here, which is to have absolutely the best food, the most nutritious, the freshest, accessible to all. Another thing we're trying to do is to achieve regenerative, highly productive agriculture without using synthetic chemicals. You know, ag actually agriculture that enriches the soil rather than d depletes it. We're also looking to have the Southern Highlands be a cluster for not just food growing, but food related businesses and particularly high tech, innovative agricultural businesses. Those could be anything from greenhouse technology um, using solar or, or other, other mechanisms. They could be um, to do with agricultural services, consulting services. The other thing we want to do is, is have this place be a center where young people can come and really learn the craft and the skill and the art of not just growing food but also being, uh, doing it well, successfully, economically. Um, and uh, you know, there should be a cachet when, when you know, two farmers meet somewhere and they say, well, where did you learn to grow food? And one says, well, I, I learned in the Southern Highlands. That's gonna mean something. You know? So we know a lot of young people would love to move to the Southern Highlands to grow here. This is about trying to make that possible. So I think you can see that we're in the very early part of this project. Um, we're a long way from having a business plan, but nevertheless, we enjoy playing around with some numbers. And here are some numbers just to tantalize you. The question is, you know, how big could this brand or sector of, of food be in the Southern Highlands? So we just took seven common vegetables. We said there are 20,000 uh, households in the Southern Highlands. So if you take lettuce, and you uh, assume that 70% of those households buy a lettuce on a weekly basis. That is $1.82 million per annum in lettuce sales. Um, similarly, if you go to celery, $3 a fortnight, if just 50% of households buy that, that's worth uh, $0.78 million. So with just seven products from just consumer uh, demand, the total could be uh, not, you know, over $9 million. And the question for On The Grow is what percentage of that $9 million could be the brand, could be the On The Grow brand, the premium, this premium product. Now, if you say 10%, that's almost a million dollars. And our back of the envelope uh, estimate is that you could uh, hope to run a food hub operationally, economically, sustainably without grants if the throughput was a million dollars a year. So 
This is about uh, sizing the opportunity and getting some realism to say, well, could we actually do this and how would it look if we did it? So I think there are some challenges in any region in uh, getting what's called collective impact, which is moving from a situation which we know all too well of fragmentation, of things happening in silos, of competition rather than collaboration, and moving to excellent collaboration that has this mutually reinforcing uh, aspect. So if you're moving a whole system, there are multiple things that need to happen simultaneously. It can't happen under the control of any one person or any one group, but how do you coordinate that? Now one of the learnings from social innovation, particularly in, this, in the United States, um, social enterprises is the importance of a back, what they call a backbone organization. Um, and Shelley, I think, was referring to this this morning and saying there's only so far that volunteering will take you. So with a big enterprise like this, we are um, you know, very convinced that a backbone organization will be, need, uh, will be needed and that involves some full-time uh, staff as well as huge amounts of volunteering. So if we just put our uh, hook out into the water, here we will be asking for significant amounts of funding across multiple uh, uh, streams of activity, um, but not yet. We're not ready to do that yet. Uh, part of it's a backbone organization. Part of it is, is connectivity through workshops. We need council's help in rezoning or getting a, a permission on the Mosfell site and so on. And uh, I know Nick is going to talk to freeing up uh, various kinds of land and making those available. Um, and the food hub will be a big green shed of some description. So our next steps are that we've, got, we've identified these nine uh, areas. Um, we would like to have project teams organized around those nine areas. Some of them are already very well organized, uh, have project teams already working on them. Um, to build an integrated plan and timetable that makes sense of all of this, um, and to keep communication going. Now the key thing for us is to solve the problem of how you manage continu continuity of supply in this climate with consistency of quality. Um, so that's, that's something which is going to you know, energize and exercise all our, all our brains because it's easy to run a farmer's market for seven months of the year here, um, but virtually impossible um, if you're not running it for, uh, to run it for 12 months. So that's a nice problem to have because it's going to stimulate lots of innovation and creativity because you're going to have to use protected cropping of some kind. Okay. So our invitation is to everyone here and indeed to the, everyone in the Southern Highlands to come on board. This will only work through early adoption. And uh, you are uh, would-be consumers, I believe, potential consumers of this premium product and also potential uh, you know, collaborators in making it happen. So we look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you very much. And I'm just one slide, Phil. Um, who, who wants change? Uh, pretty much everyone. Uh, who's prepared to be part of the change and put, commit to making the change? Well, it's going to take all of us. Thank you. Thank you.